I, I am Master Kambai. Welcome to this new replay commentary. Usually, the way I do stuff, I download all my uh, games so I can do replay commentaries uh, whenever I can. But today, I chose to cover a game I just played a few hours ago. And it's mainly because I'm surprised of many things in the game. Now, I won't go too deep into it. You will see everything. And this was an interesting game. Uh, so, this was Javier vs. Oth. And yeah, let's let's go over to both profile and the chart. My opponent was much more skilled than me in the league in general, and this game was a global league game. So uh, yeah, let's do this. So my opponent was Ark. Ark unit gain plus 10% attack. Black wave for 5 stars. All unit gain plus 1 HP and all enemy unit lose 1 HP. Black storm for 9 stars. All unit gain 2 HP and all enemy unit lose 2 HP. So this is one of the best super in the entire game. I will still say and think Ox should be tier 2. Um, he is a very, very slow CO. Uh, but he is very strong. Uh, being tier 2 doesn't mean you're weak. Eagle is really good. Eagle is really strong. If you play iPhones. You have a chance to beat some Kambai player with Eagle because Eagle will just outnumber almost every CEO outside of maybe Sensei and Achi. Now let's go over to Javier, the character I chose. Javier! Unit gain plus 20% defense against indirect units. Come tower grant all unit additional 10% defense. So he basically becomes vulnerable with one tower and this is really good. Uh, he has tower shield for 3 stars. And direct defense is increased to 40. Come tower bonuses are doubled. So he, be he becomes really strong. With one tower he has... Can buy day to day white out expensive unit for one turn, so this is really good. For six stars, and direct defense is increased to 60%. Come tower bonuses are tripled. So this is really, really good. You have the defense and the offense of Can buy during moral boost is really good all you need is one tower if you got two tower well you become basically can buy on samurai spirit for a cost of six stars instead of seven so javier can really become strong really strong now with everything being said let's go over to both Profile, my profile, and my opponent's profile. Kambai shall have bases. Official rating 900. Win 157. Lost 159. Yes, I was only losing spree recently. I also won a few, but I lost more than I won. Uh, so yeah, with that being said, my top 5 is Eagle, Dre, Jess, Storm, Javier. I really want to make Javier my 4th pick. And then I, I can go back to my Storm uh, broken plays. 
Now, let's go over to my opponent. The juicy player, the good player. Mr. Ab. Mr. Nab? I don't know how to tell your name. Official rating 1043.18. 117 win. 92 loss. 1 draw. And his top 5 is Kindle, very good pick. Adder, good pick. Olaf, very strong pick. Ark, good pick. Eagle, very strong pick. I like this card. Uh, this guy plays a lot of Ark, and this is interesting. Uh, so let's see how the replay goes. So, in case you missed it, back in April, we got a replay commentary with wit, I should say, wit can't buy. And this was great versus Kindle in this map. Since my game with can't buy, I feel much better playing this map and this game because can't buy is a very good opponent and I learned a lot with my game against him and since since then I don't know what's going on with me since then well most of my games in this map they go well I do well I am much better in this map grit is really strong in this map that's also why uh, facing can't buy grit in this map helped me a lot. Uh, so let's do that replay commentary and I am wondering if the replays are still broken. We will see. Yeah. They are still broken, my friends. They are still broken. So... We will be slow. Sorry about that. We will be slow. Capture, capture. Now, when I look back, I should have went there. Uh, I think I went there because I was like, oh, maybe I can go here faster, or maybe I can grab that tower faster, but then I realized too late, it's a waste of time for me to go there, because I won't have enough time to snatch that tower away. So I think I already already did a uh, mistake here which is very interesting now he goes in the mountain here this is interesting I disagree with that usually I send my infantry on the mountain only when I have my artillery ready to shoot the tank usually but this is me, and this guy is higher ranked than me. So maybe I am wrong, and he's right. We will see. So, yeah. Let's see how it goes. Capture, capture, capture. Capture, capture.
capture, capture. Very interesting. I think this is a mistake. He should have shot this thing or he should have at least tried to shoot that thing down. Now, destroying this pipe faster means it will reach the sensor faster, but I still think it's a huge mistake and maybe this mistake will cost him the game. We will see how it goes. So, infantry, infantry, very interesting again. Now, I think I will have tank infantry, infantry this time around. Now, because of my cat by game, I see how important this style is. Bam, 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 bam. Capture, capture, capture. APC tank infantry. Very interesting build. Usually I don't make any APC in this map because this map is really small. But this is my take on it. This is how I see it. This map. APC are really good in bigger maps, but in smaller maps, I'm not quite sure because I'm just not quite sure. APC should boost a lot of infantry. In smaller maps, they don't boost that many infantry, and infantry don't require the same amount of boost because the map is smaller. So I think this is a mistake, he did a mistake here, but that's my take on it. Attack the tank! Anti-air! Infantry, infantry! Capture! Capture! Capture. Now my tank is free. So this is wrong. Usually, when you don't have the time to kill the tank, you should at least try to block the tank. Even if you will uh, receive damage from it, try to block it. A free tank is 7k more to deal with. A free tank is the extra unit that can affect your unit count. So, it's weird. It's really weird. Maybe this guy is Mr. Nahab little brother or something. I really don't know. Usually people in the 1000 realms, they are really, really strong and so far, I have seen three mistakes. Attacking the pipe instead of the tank, making an APC and not even trying to stop the tank. I really don't know, maybe the guy had mercy because he was like, oh I have Hawk, he has Javier, look. I think Javier is a better seal than Ock, but global damage in longer games will always win, usually, usually. You need, you need a really, really good lead before the first Black Storm to survive and maintain your army, and you still need to maintain said lead. If you see a second black storm. 
The second Black Storm usually still away the game. So if you're able to receive two Black Storm, usually you will be able, if you are good enough, to seal a victory before a third Black Storm. Because having three Black Storm is 27 stars. It's really long to charge this up. And usually you don't see three Black Storm. If there's a third Black Storm, there is a stalemate somewhere and Ock cannot finish up his enemy or the enemy of Ock cannot finish up off. Finish off, I should say. So, let's keep going. Enter the APC, move the APC around, resupply, drop the infantry, tank, infantry, and infantry. As you can see, I dealt damage, so this is really bad for him. At least he will be able to go there, but now with this tank, I am able to see that infantry and I laugh. I will be like, oh, what a juicy infantry, let's first strike it. Because if I go for the building there, he has the chance to interrupt my cap with this infantry. And if I just interrupt his cap, maybe, just maybe, I can get a first blood, a first kill there. Because I got a tank ready in the center, while he has none. He has no tank so far. Yes. Two tanks are built, one is in his way, but the other one is still on the base. So right now I got the lead because I was able to free my tank. Capture the building, capture the building. Move the anti-air, I buy a second recon, and here is my explanation. The best way to win against Auk is to win fast or get the upper end early in the game. I said earlier Blackstorm is probably the best super in this game, but it's very slow, so you don't want to see it. And a Blackstorm cannot really flip the table. It's very sad to say, it cannot. It will break stalemates and it will steal your victory, but in no case a black storm can flip a table. Usually, if your black storm gives you the win, it means you were already winning or about to win before the black storm. I've never seen any cases where a black storm saved your game, no. You can make it longer with a black storm. You can create a stalemate if you are losing, but in no shape or form a black storm can put you back in the race. It can only brings can only bring a a uh, stalemate or break a stalemate. This is the only purpose of black storm. So let's keep going uh, and fancy cap. Capture the building, capture, capture, capture. Now he did a new mistake. Count the HP. 13 against 7. Is it a good idea to capture the building? No. Take a second look. I got a tank and an infantry as well. So this means I can decide to just kill off your capturing infantry. If you just decided to first strike with your 6 HP, you can probably deal me 2-3 damage 
and receives 2-3 damage. So my infantry would drop to 4 or 5 HP. If you get a high roll, maybe I can drop to 3 HP. Because this is Ark with 1 tower. With 4 or 3 HP, your 7 HP, if it gets a high roll, it can finish off my infantry. If I have 5 HP, then your 7 will probably deal me 4 damage or 3 damage, leaving my infantry to 2 HP. Right now, he just decided to sacrifice one of his 2 infantry. And this is bad, because he already lost a tank, and I still have this tank around. So this is already looking bad for my opponent. Now you see, he dealt even more damage than expected. I am pretty sure after seeing that, if he attacks my infantry instead of capturing, that infantry would have died. So this is another mistake, and I am surprised of this. The more I see things unfolding, the more I believe this is the little brother of our boy, uh, Mr. Naab. Now, I place both tanks in range of each other, they overlap each other, and it's mainly because I know at that point he has a tank somewhere there, so I expect that tank to come. So uh, I'm like, okay, I will overlap them, and I will hope for the best. Let's see how it goes. So I move both artillery because I know this game will be an HQ race, as we call it. Because I know if the game drag on forever, Ock will win. If there is a stalemate, Ock will break it with Blackstorm. So I need to make sure there is no stalemate and I need to win fast. Now this was not really good. I will tell you this. If you cannot finish off a unit, I don't suggest to take any engagement. Here's the why. I know you have a tank there. If both of my tanks overlap each other, I will finish off your unit. It's as simple as that. Uh, this is what I learned by playing a lot. You need to kill stuff you choose to attack. Sometimes you can take several good engagement and make your opponent weak here in the front line and this can be really good but in a tank to tank situation usually i suggest to people and myself i try my best to finish off what i touch i don't want to leave any tank alive so this is just my take and i will add more to this there is no other tank in the area to overlap with this one. If he had a tank as backup, this engagement can be fine because you have a tank overlapping it. But you have no tank in backup, so you just threw your tank there. This is bad. But hey, things happen, people are not perfect, and so far he did a few mistakes. So, I will keep saying this, I think this is Mr. Nahab, little brother that is currently playing. Or Mr. Nahab, little sister, I really don't know. That's just not his game. Battlecopter, anti-air, infantry, infantry. So, this is good, I have nothing to say there. You see, first strike, second strike, I kill it, first strike, second strike, capture, 
I heal my infantry. Now, I don't attack that infantry because first of all that infantry is standing on a building. So this means that infantry will repair. And second, I have no other unit to put more pressure on this soldier. So I cannot kill it or place it really low HP. So I'm not attacking it. There's no point. And if he gets trapped into my infantry, I will be really pleased. I will be like, <laughs> let's, let's kill that three infantry. But I want him to go at me. I won't go at him if he is only building and if I cannot finish off that infantry. So, let's keep it going. Capture the building in the center. Capture the building in the center. First strike, I know this may look bad as an engagement, but keep in mind first strike are really good. And now, that 2 HP infantry cannot enter up my cap. Even with a eye roll, I don't think it can deal even one damage. So he will need something else if he wants to enter up my cap. And this is the point of my attack. Even if I don't finish off that unit, I don't want that unit to piss me off during my capping phase. So... I move around. Place my anti-air in the forest because I don't want to reveal my end. I don't know what he has, but that anti-air is some kind of wild card to make sure there is no battle copter that stop me from reaching my goal in the HQ race. And now I will tell something else there. So far in my opponent tactic. I don't see any indirect aiming for my black bolt. I don't really understand why. Maybe he didn't realize this map is based on HQ race. Most of my games in this map ends up in a HQ race. Now of course in some games they are stalemate. Maybe he wants a stalemate. I really don't know. But usually this map is an HQ race. The better player that race the enemy HQ shall win. This is as simple as that in this map. And I played a lot in this map. So I know what I am talking about. Anti-air infantry. Dang, there's a glitch there. So, day 10. Now, I started attacking that pipe. At some point, I will destroy it, maybe. We will see. Now, this is why the extra tank is very important. I killed this extra tank off, and I ended up killing a lot of his units. Take a look to the unit count. At the start of his turn, I got more income, I got more unit count, and more unit volume. Now he needs to do something. To flip the table, he needs to do something to pressure me enough, to scare me enough. Because right now, I win on every front. This is still very early in the game and a lot of things can happen. But you need to do something fast. Because right now, nothing happens on your side. On my side, I slowly create my HQ race with both artillery. On my side, I capture buildings in the center for extra funds you will not get. Now, finishing off that infantry is fine. I don't have much to say there. Uh, that tank is well placed. Now that copter. This is another mistake. You leave it there. In my vision. 
usually, except if your HQ is being attacked, I think sending the copter on the left side is better. And I will be honest, I say that right now, but I never do it. <laughs> this is very funny. I say that right now, but I realize I never do it. Sending the copter on the left side means there's no anti-air to surprise attack it. It, it may feel tempting to send the copter the further you can, the faster you can, but I just realized how weak this move was. Look at my anti-air. That anti-air will get a free shot. And if it's one unit to one unit, I will win the trade because your copter is 9k and my anti-air is 8k. So I don't care to lose my anti-air. The only purpose of the anti-air is to kill air units. You killed one air unit, you are happy. Except if it's a transport copter, then you're like, I need to kill a second one and then I will be happy. Now, let's keep a going. Now, I, as you can see, I, I did build a second anti-air. And here's the why. I expect to lose my first anti-air fast. Because I expect air unit fast as well. So I don't want to be short in anti-air. I want to make sure I have enough anti-air. Now I will not sacrifice my anti-air for nothing. I became better since the day I played versus Deejus. So I know when to use my anti-air. But... I still need to think about the longer game and uh, I, I don't need to wait until my anti-air dies to get an anti-air out. It's wrong. It's too late. If your anti-air dies and you don't have a backup anti-air, it's too late. It's really sad, but it's true. Beating tank, infantry, infantry. This is actually really good. This is the kind of stuff I would do. And I'm surprised I did that. Okay. So as I said, I kill this. Capture both building in the center. I to tank. Join both tanks. Now, when I look back, I feel stupid. But at the same time, I was like, maybe I will get more money. I really don't know. I don't know what was my thought process, but it's wrong. I should not have done that. Now, as you can see right now, I got a bit more value, more income, and I'm one unit down because I joined, which is wrong. Don't join just because you want to. This is what I just did, and this is wrong. Don't do it. Anyway, let's keep going. I killed one copter. I finish off the infantry. I damage this. I kill that. Now I denied income, so I am very happy about that. First strike. First strike. Now these two engagements are really bad. Uh, the main explanation is both infantry are still alive. When I look back, I think I should have kept my infantry in the back or hidden somewhere. I think the forest one is actually fine because I want to control the forest style before my opponent can because getting control over that tile is very important in the HQ race you need that tile for an artillery or something to block any enemy unit so I think the forest style move was just fine Medium tank, infantry, infantry. Now, as you can see, I did not attack him because I wasn't quite sure if I could kill it off. So, let's keep going there. We got some uh, oxygen there.
So far, so good. He kills my infantry damage. The other one retreat. First strike. Now, this is a bad engagement. And I will get back to what I said earlier about finishing off units. Now, you see, I outnumber him there. And I have access to a black bolt, which means I can heal. And now that 8 HP infantry may die. So this is why it's really bad. When you cannot finish off units, usually I recommend to not attack. And now there, this is not really good as well. Because if he tries to finish off the unit, he will place a tank very exposed in the center. And if I have other tank lurking around, this will be bad for him. He is already two tanks down because I still have... Wait, no, never mind. He only has one tank down. So this is fine, actually. Now, as you can see, at the end of his turn, I got a better unit count. So, this is telling a lot on my lead right now. It's not a big difference, it's not a big gap, but it's still... It's still there. And if you take a look at the income, the more he will wait, the more the game will be a stalemate, the worse it will become for him. Tricky at this state in the game, it's not that bad, but the longer he will wait to really flip the table, the worse it will become for him. Even if he's off, as I mentioned earlier, Black Storm is not a winning super. It's a really good super, but it's not a winning super. So now I attack the artery despite my rule to kill off stuff. Because this is an artery, and I see the artery as a very big threat for my plans with the Black Bolt. I want to HQ tap the guy. So that artery is a threat. I need to damage it and force it to run away elsewhere. This is my objective there. Now, because that artery is weak here, it will be harder for him to attack my wall. And during that time, both of these two artery will just shoot, shoot, shoot. And so far, he has no artery there. So, I was really worried he had artery in the flank where my HQ was. I was like, if he starts his own HQ race, can I really resist him because... I don't have that many units by my HQ. I was really scared, I was really afraid, but now as I am watching this replay, I realize there's no enderect. There's nothing to worry about. And I think this is a major mistake. By this time in the game, you should have a few enderect or at least something to kill the Black Bolt. Usually by this time in the game, in this map, one of the two players is about to HQ cap for the first time. Now, I'm not saying all game lasts 12 days, I'm just saying we are near the end game at that time, usually. So, let's keep going. Eel, first strike. First strike, kill, damage. Now, I broke my rule again, and here's the explanation. He started to be aggressive, so I needed to counter-attack. And the second explanation behind that is my fear of the Enderex. My fear of the Artery. My fear of something happening to my Black Bolt. And I will add this up. I activated my power as well for defense buff, so I needed to fully use it and be good with it. So there's a lot of things there, and I also wanted to kill what I could kill and damage what I could damage before a black wave, because black wave can be good, 
Black Storm is much better, but Black Wave can help out much earlier in the game if you are in a bad spot. You can maybe make the game more even. Now, Black Wave cannot break any stalemate, but it can buy you some time, it can help you out early in the game. Finish up, finish up. So now I make a bomber because I got the money and I make three infantry. Now you see my explanation behind that bomber is what if he has arteries and stuff I don't see and he kills my black bolt. I need something to defend my HQ and a battlecopter in my own opinion is not enough. A battlecopter is the last resort. That bomber, usually I keep telling everyone bombers are not really impressive. They are not the best unit. They are good, don't get me wrong. They are good, but I'm not a fan of them. I bought one because I was like, I'm scared. It's not because it's my best choice, it's because I'm scared and because I have the money. Usually it's not my first choice. First strike, almost killed my unit, finish off my unit which is really good. Now, he should have attacked this, maybe with a eye roll he could have killed that unit. Now he will take a very good engagement, that medium tank shot was really strong, it was really good. So now as you can see my power really helps out, uh, my infantry survived, well most of them. And his counterattack this turn was really good for him. I'm still ahead in terms of unit count, in terms of value, and in terms of building. So we could say this game right now is a stalemate. Bomber goes there. Kill this. Damage. 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 Now when I look back, one, two, three, four, five. I should have attacked the anti-air, but I think I wanted to cut his vision. And that was a good gamble for me. He has no more vision over the area. But when I look back, I should have attacked the anti-air instead. First strike, second strike, first strike. Now, even if it's 3 HP, I want to get the most value out of it, and I want to kill stuff around his HQ, because I can still overwhelm him, even if he has bigger units than me, and even if my medium thing is on the opposite side, I can still be a threat to him, I can still try my best to get that HQ, and he will be forced into using overkill to try to stop me. So now I capture this building because I can. Medium tank, infantry, infantry, uh, artery I should say. Artery was really good. I bought it because I was like, okay, uh, that artery there, maybe one of the two may die. And I want something else in my medium tank to kill that black bolt. Now. This is where I think we know the outcome of this game. I will keep going with this replay commentary despite knowing the outcome and despite telling you the outcome right now. Only to show you Blackstorm cannot save a lost game. And I learned in the hard way, the hard way I should say, the hard way in the past. I fought, I believe it was Profeta. I, I fought Profeta. I was Ock, he was Wombolt. He was destroying me in Verdun. And I was like, maybe my Blackstorm can save me, but no. That won't happen. So, yeah, let's keep going. As I was playing, I didn't know how big my lead was. Kill, kill, 
damage kill damage kill kill the black bolt hq rush kill the copter kill the infantry Now I retreat because I don't want to overextend and I have no visual, I don't know what he has. So I decided I decided to retreat. Uh, I still think it was the right call, the right thing to do. If you don't know what's going on there, if you lack the intel to act on something, then just don't act on it and do something else. So uh, this is me. Being scared, basically. And I think another explanation of what I just did is the Black Storm. I wanted most of my unit to fully recover from the Black Storm. So I still think it's the right thing. Same goes for the medium tank. So my economy will be really damaged on my next turn, but most of my key pieces right now on the board will still be able to fight. That bomber with 8 HP can still do well. So yeah, let's keep going. Now at that point I thought I had it. But then I realized he has black storm, so I'm like, okay. But this will still be a challenge for him to enter up the cap. Anti-air tank tank. Just take a look, unit count 28 to 17, and look at the volume, I am winning right now. Black Storm, the volume drop, the volume go higher, but I still have 20k more than my opponent, so he will need to do a lot of things to catch up with me. And this is exactly what I mentioned earlier. Black Storm cannot flip the table. Can put you back in the race, which is what just happened. He's back in the race. Because his value is almost meeting mine. But now we are back into some kind of stalemate. But I have that small advantage because I got more money, I got more units. So it's just a slow burn. This game was a slow burn. Now, I must say it, I was scared. That Black Storm was really good. And I thought I lost. But I was like, maybe, just maybe, I am better than what I think. And maybe I can still win despite the Black Storm. But during the game, I didn't know. He had 17 units. I didn't know his volume. Battlecopter, tank, infantry, infantry. Now, as you can see, he took the lead. And we almost have the same amount of units. So now I realized all the damage. I was like, oh my. So let's keep going and damage the tank. Heal the infantry, hide the artillery in the forest. I blew up the pipe and now I have uh, a recon for vision. Take a look, I have 5 extra units and 10k lead. He got trapped. He killed my infantry, damaged my unit. Now, I must tell this, this is overextension. Now, yes, you damaged my artillery, but you are blind. You barely see the front line. So you don't know there's a medium tank incoming. You don't know there's a tank incoming. And on top of that, I have my power ready. So this means 
you overextend. That anti-air should zone out stuff. Shooting that artery is wrong. Anti-air should not be on the front line. Now the anti-air hidden, hidden in the left side is a good one because maybe you will trap one of my air units. But the one on the right side is used to be aggressive and this is not what you want for the anti-air. Now in some cases anti-air can be aggressive to destroy wall of units if you need to reach something that has high value behind the lines but in general you don't want to use your anti-air to shoot arteries you don't my infantry died Transport copter, infantry tank, infantry. Now take a look. He got one extra infantry at the start of my turn. And I still have the uh, income and the value lead. So it goes all the way back to uh, what I said earlier about... About... Blackstorm doesn't make you win. Now, we will do this turn. And then we will move a bit further in the timeline. Mainly because I know I won and guys probably guessed it right now. Uh, if you didn't, well, sorry for the spoiler, but things happen. So now, as you can see, that anti-air, yes, it's, it's 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 on the front line, but it's not exposed because there's this and there's that to protect it. So that anti-air right now, it's only to scare off my opponent. So I think I will move to day 18. That looks good. So you see right now there's another stalemate. Our values are similar. But I still got better unit count, I still got better economy. Now he bought a fighter and fighter are really good when there's a bomber, but it's it's Auk. So with Auk I don't really suggest fighters. Because usually your opponent's bombers will be a bit weaker and your anti-air should be able to take out uh, enemy bombers with AWK because of Blackstorm, because of extra firepower. Now this is my turn, this is one of the cases I said where I need to defend myself. This is why I bought that Battlecopter. Kill the tank. Kill the tank, that mage, kill the infantry, kill, kill, that mage, kill. Now when I look back, I think I should have used my power at that point. I don't know why I held it. And now we have the second black storm incoming. Take a look at the unit count in the volume. I am ahead of him. By a lot, because now this has updated. We are back at the same point as we were on the first Blackstorm. Remember on the first Blackstorm, I roughly had 27-ish unit and my opponent has 18-ish unit. We are back at square one here and this is Blackstorm number two. So this reinforced the idea that Blackstorm will not make you win. It's the best super in the game but 
it's good only on stalemates and if you are already winning. Right now, there's no true stalemate, let's be honest. I thought there was, but look at the numbers, look at the money, look at the unit on the board. It's not really a stalemate. So this is what's going on here. That Lagstorm will not save the game for him. Blackstorm, as I mentioned, that fighter is not needed because that anti air can kill off that bomber. Kill the mage, kill, 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 kill. Oh, well, I survived. Interesting. Medium tank, infantry, infantry. Now let's see if I am fine. Look at that. Four extra units. 10k less than him, but this is the start of my turn. And I got 22k. And I can do good amount of damage. I got the artery in the center able to shoot the tank. And then the battle copter to finish off the tank. I got two medium tank on the front line, and if I reveal my opponent's artery, I can shoot down his artery. So right now, it doesn't look good for my opponent. I will take a look, I don't think there's a third one. No, there's no third one. So, you see, I trapped that fighter there. Because I wanted to bring that anti-air here, but... Now, do you understand what I meant by there? Now, let's do that last turn, and then let's go over to why my opponent lost. First try. Capture, kill, damage, kill, damage, kill, damage, kill, kill. Anti air. Now I placed that, I knew it was just meat shield because it cannot survive, but. He will still need one of his units to shoot that anti-air. If he doesn't, he cannot reach that medium tank. Now, let, let's go take a look. Do you see what I meant earlier? There's a 25 unit gap between the both of us. Which is huge. Even with that third Blackstorm, there's no way he can catch up to a 20 unit gap. Now, I think all the mistakes he did, did stack up. The worst of all was to let my tank alive. That early tank in the game may look like nothing, but it's an extra tank. It's 7k I used to enter up caps and to control the center. I killed one of his tank using my own tank as bait. So this was what cost him the game, this is what I believe. I also must say... Um, that guy was not really finishing off my stuff. He was leaving unit behind. It's probably uh, Mr. Naab's sister or brother that played this game. Now, keep in mind, in this map, kill your opponent tank. Or stop it and then kill it. You cannot let it lose. Or lose. I should say, you cannot let it anywhere near the center second thing in mind 
this map is the HQ race. Race your opponent HQ. There's a lot of maps like this one. It's just the best way to win. I kept giving pressure to his HQ because I killed Black Bolt. I had no pressure on my HQ because my Black Bolt was still there. If he had just a bit more pressure by my HQ, white on my boat on it, I think he could have done something good, but he did not. Another thing in mind, as off, the only moment you want to use fighters is when you know your opponent has a lot of air units, or there's a second case, if your opponent has a fighter of his own. And there's the third case, when you're open as a stealth. You don't need Auk Fighter to deal with bombers. You have Black Storm and you have anti-airs. Your anti-airs are really, really good. Now, I hope you guys enjoyed. Like, comment and subscribe. We will see each other in future videos. Have a great day.